Good morning and welcome, everyone. I guess I should be, figure out a better process, turn my mic off when I go to take that off or something. Uh, well, it's a wonderful day that we have. Um, if you uh, notice there aren't as many people here uh, today, it's because we had a Saturday night service last night outside, and we had a fairly good group of people there. Uh, and they had, a number of them had been coming here Sunday morning. Um, but that's okay. Uh, we enjoy God's grace and the creation that he has given to us. Our theme for today is weathering uh, the storm. Uh, we certainly have storms in our lives. Uh, announcements beyond that. Uh, vacation Bible school, there will be a virtual vacation Bible school this year, so... Um, Information can be found on our website and on Facebook, so you can spread the word uh, about that. Uh, with the COVID-19 situation, we just didn't think it was wise to have an in-person vacation Bible school. Um, all of our service should be on the screen, and a special welcome to all of you with Facebook Live that are tuning in, uh, participating in the service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. Our Old Testament is from Job chapter 38. The Lord said to Job, Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it boost, burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed limits for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no farther, 
and here shall your proud waves be stayed? Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place, that it might take hold of the skirts of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it? It is changed like clay under the seal, and its features stand out like a garment. From the wicked their light is withheld, and their uplifted arm is broken. Have you entered into the springs of the sea, or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been revealed to you, or have you seen the gates of deep darkness? Have you comprehended the expanse of the earth? Declare if you know all this. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle comes from Romans chapter 10. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, that the person who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how are they to call on him in whom they have not yet not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord who has believed in what has heard from us, and Lord who has believed what he has heard from us. So faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated and let us sing. 
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, this past week, another hurricane made landfall in the United States. It was a Category 1 hurricane, so it was considered less severe compared to, well, some of those massive Category 5 hurricanes that we've had in recent years. Even though it was considered less powerful, it was still a dangerous storm. People needed to take proper precautions to protect life and to protect property. I am saddened to report that several people lost their lives as this storm tracked northward along the eastern seaboard. There is no doubt that storms happen in life. Some are physical storms, like the recent hurricane I just mentioned, but some storms, they take on a very different nature in our lives. There is the storm of circumstances that a person will experience with the death of a loved one. It wasn't that long ago that my father uh, passed away, this past May. I described the days that followed that, maybe even the, the week or a couple of weeks, as if it was, I was going through a whirlwind. It was a challenge trying to make all of the necessary decisions and to get everything done at the appropriate time. There is the storm of circumstances that a person will experience when they are dealing with some type of critical health situation in their life. It could be cancer or a stroke or an accident or an infection that is difficult to treat. Often, the information that is put forward can become overwhelming. A person can feel as if they are poorly equipped to make a proper or a right decision. You can feel as if you are simply hanging on for dear life and just hoping that this storm would go away. You trust that you're in the hands of qualified professionals and quality people that are looking out after your best interest, but you can still feel very overwhelmed by all of this. Now, there's other scenarios that I could put forward, but I think this is sufficient to make my point. There are various storms that we have in life that will challenge us physically, emotionally, and spiritually. How do you weather the storms? What do you trust? Who do you trust? How do you survive? I'd like to begin by taking a brief look at our reading from Job. This reading is from Job chapter 38, so if you're 38 chapters in with the reading, obviously there's a whole lot more to the story before this. But in brief, Job experienced a great catastrophe in his life. He lost almost everything. Lost his house, family, business, and his good health. His friends convinced Job to blame himself and to blame God for his circumstances. Now, it did take a while, 38 chapters worth, before Job finally got to this angry with God phase. You know, psychologists will tell you that that is a true phase that people go through when they're going through the grief process they will eventually get to this angry with God phase. In our reading here in Job is the Lord's response. I'll call it a lesson in humility. The Lord is reminding Job that he doesn't know everything and he certainly doesn't understand everything in this world. There's a lot of stuff that's just kind of above and beyond us. Not only did that apply to Job, but that applies to us. The blame game does not help, nor does it solve any problems in life. It will not help you weather the storm. 
Now, it is true that proper analysis can have a very good use, and it has a wonderful purpose in decision-making, but you really got to do that analysis at a different time, not in the middle of the storm and the crisis. In addition to that, blaming God will simply erode your faith in God, which can be critically important for surviving the storm. Let's move on to our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. Often this story is titled, Jesus Walking on Water. Now you guys all know the one time that you can walk on water, right? It's when it's frozen, absolutely. We all can walk on water when it's frozen. Oh, I know, bad pastor, bad. But that is the reality. It's the only time we can really walk on water without divine intervention. Now, this isn't the only time that the disciples got caught in a storm on the Sea of Galilee. And that is, in fact, the location of this event, is on the Sea of Galilee. There's another event that's recorded in Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That is the time where Jesus was in the boat with him, but he was, I'll call it, asleep at the helm. He was in the boat and just taking a nice old nap, uh, in the middle of a storm. The disciples thought they were going to die, and one of them even said, Teacher, don't you care if we are going to drown? You know, that's a similar thought that Job expressed. It's the age-old question. Does God care when you're going through a severe storm in your life. Sometimes we wonder, right? In the event in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33, Jesus shows that he cares. He cared enough to do a divine interaction, to walk on water, to get to the disciples in their time of need so that he would be present. Having the Lord with you and caring for you is important in weathering the storms in life. However, sometimes we're like Peter. Peter wanted to put the Lord to the test. You ever do that? You want to put the Lord to the test? Yeah, I've, I've done that a couple of times. Usually not a wise idea, <laughs> but we, we do that at times. So Peter tests Jesus by asking to do something special. Peter wants to do the impossible by denying the laws of nature and walking on water like Jesus. Oh, how we can complicate our situation by trying to go above and beyond our God-given ability. You know, when you do that, when you push the envelope and are kind of going to extremes, you might be okay for a little while. But sooner or later, reality is going to set in. And when that happens, you begin to sink because you realize you are overpowered and overwhelmed. Instinctively, when that happens, you take your eyes off of the Lord, and you focus on the severity of your circumstances. And then you begin to sink. Trying to weather the storms of life on your own is not a good thing. You need the Lord, for one. You need to keep your eyes on the Lord. You need to trust in him no matter how big and how bad the storm might be. You need to trust the Lord's provision even when it may seem like his provision is, I'll call it, ordinary. Why would I say that? In the account of Jesus walking on water, there's two very important ordinary gifts from God that's easy to just, I'll call it, take for granted. The one obvious ordinary gift is the boat. The boat. Staying in the boat. 
Now, there are books that will encourage Christians to have faith to get out of the boat, to walk on water, to trust that God is going to do miracles and divine interventions. Peter certainly did that for a short period of time. Then he began to sink and he had to be rescued by Jesus. But I want to point out Matthew chapter 14, verse 32 that says, And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. They. That's Peter and Jesus. Jesus used the ordinary gift, the boat, and he got in. And the storm ceased. Using the God-given resources to weather the storm is a wise move. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have faith in Jesus. The key thing is that we believe he is greater than the storm. He can calm the wind and the waves and whatever storm you may be experiencing, especially those storms that we experience in our heart. Sometimes we have a storm that's raging in there and we do not feel at peace. In our circumstances today, that's pretty easy. In the meantime, we use the God-given resources to weather our storm. The second is the disciples. The disciples themselves were a gift from God. And I want to remind you that the same is true for all of you, that we are gifts from God to each other. Now, I will admit that sometimes people can be a great challenge during a storm in life. Personally, this is just a personal reflection, screaming people drive me nuts, right? So you might think, oh, how do you handle roller coasters? You can ask my wife. I don't ride roller coasters very often. (laughs) Screaming people, they just get on my nerves. Uh, If I was in the boat and one of those other disciples were screaming, I very well may go with Peter and take my chances with walking on water with Jesus, even though I may sink, (laughs) just to get away from the noise. Yes. But still, I think it's wise for us to remember that we are, in fact, stronger together. We can encourage and support one another. We can comfort one another to the best of our abilities. The saying is true, we are all in the same boat. The storm raging around us, we're all in the same circumstances. So let's do the best we can as we weather the storms of life. I think this is part of what makes our current pandemic difficult. Our leaders and our experts are telling us to practice social distancing and isolation. It makes us feel as if we are alone and having to face the storm by ourselves. Last night, one of our members who hadn't been in church since March was able to join us because it was outside and he felt safe. Um, I imagine most of you know him, Mike O'Connor. Due to extreme health situations, it's wise for him to stay confined to home. 150 days, and last night was only the fourth time that he's been out of the house, three times to the doctor, and last night. It's real easy when you're going through something like that to feel as if you're having to face the storm alone. A lot of people are there. You see, God made us to be social beings, God made us to be together and to work together. Now, there's a lot of different, I'll call it degrees of togetherness. Some people, well, they love to hug and hold each other as storms rage. You know those people that classify themselves as huggers? I'm not one of those people. Uh, But some people, that's important to them. Other people... They prefer to be more alone, just simply content to know that there are other people available if needed. 
No matter where you are on this spectrum, it doesn't really matter too much. We are all still in this together, and we are all still here together by the grace of God in Jesus Christ. So here's a, a quick summary for you. Don't blame God for the circumstances. It's not going to do any good. Two, don't think that you know it all because we don't. Three, use the God-given available resources. Four, work together as much as we can. You know, we've got electronic devices and, and phones and computers and all of this type of stuff. There are people that are experiencing extreme loneliness. Take a time to make some contacts. It can be greatly appreciated. Not only for them, it can be good for you as well. And last, trust the Lord to save us from this storm. You see, at just the right time, he will bring this storm to an end. Steps for weathering the storm. I pray that this message has been meaningful to you and help you as we endure. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us rise and confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Um, offering. As usual, we have offering plates that are available. Uh, if you happen to bring your offering with you, you can also uh, mail an offering into the church, 1135 Oliver Street, or use one of the online giving options at our website, either an ACH transaction or a debit or credit card. And uh, just want to thank everyone for your support of this ministry. Um, it's much appreciated and helps us continue to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out uh, to our members, to our community, and beyond. Let us sing, When Peace Like a River. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for your presence in our life each and every day. Sometimes our circumstances are wonderful like this beautiful day that we get to enjoy today. But sometimes our circumstances are extremely challenging, whether it be a physical storm that comes our way through extreme weather, or if it's something due to a health crisis. And there's so many other things that can create extreme storms in our lives. We thank you for your presence, that you are there with us, that you care for us, love us, and support us each and every day. And help us, Lord, to be your people, to be there to support one another, that we extend your love and care to each other during our times of need. Help us, Lord, to recognize that we are journeying through this world together and that we work to make our circumstances as best as possible as we journey together in faith. And Lord, we lift up to you a prayer of thanksgiving as Larry and Cindy Kruger are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. We thank you, Lord, for the many years that you've blessed them together and we ask you, Lord, to bless them with many more. 
May their time of celebration with, with family and friends be wonderful and peaceful. And Lord, we lift up to you those that are experiencing health difficulties at this time. Mike Phillips, Dick Dewar, Mike O'Connor, Leroy Profrock, Nina Wood, John Martinez, Philip James, Sandy Haynes, Vicki Weiss, Shirley Allen, Chris Finley, Marcia Neary, Kurt Yeager, Joe Della Valley, Alan Volker, Amelia Della Valley, Marilyn Brown, Whitney Worth, Nelson Goodrich, Faye Vogel, Ruth Hacker, Jen Calandra, Laura Phillips, Cloyd and Shirley Snyder, Ron Ball, Emily Crane, John Hacker Jr., Don Schneider, Eugene Zem, Marlene Sybil, Gail Burdick, Barb Young, Charlotte Lyons. We also lift up to you, Lord, anyone else that we may have on our hearts and minds. People that are hospitalized either with COVID-19 or something else. Those that are having to isolate at home for various reasons with COVID-19. We ask you, Lord, to be with all of these people and open your powerful hand to bring healing of both body and soul. Strengthen and support all of these people during their time of special need. And Lord, we lift up to you a special prayer for the family and friends of Joe Neary as Joe died and went to his heavenly home. We ask you, Lord, to be with Marcia, Tracy, and Owen, and so many others as they mourn this tragic and unexpected loss of this young man. Give them comfort and peace each and every day. We left up to you, Lord, our country. There's great division in our country and help people to be able to see each other's point of view. Help there to be useful and respectful dialogue. And we ask you, Lord, to help our country to be able to heal. We especially ask you to impact this COVID-19 and to relieve us from this storm that is going on around us and creating so much difficulty for our country and across this world. We pray all of these things and we ask you, Lord, to remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.